is going to be fun. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Rebel TV. My, we're just back here chatting away. We forgot what time it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, today I'm really excited because this is going to be a fun topic and a great conversation, I'm, I'm sure. We're going to talk about how and when and why your dreams come true. Um, my guests today are Kelly and Kore. Uh, you guys want to do a quick intro and tell people a little bit about yourself, Kelly? Sure, I'm Kelly, the Take Action Mom and a proud rebel marketer. Um, I live in Lima, Peru with my husband and son and a bunch of dogs, so if you hear barking, or baby's crying, it's not my baby. But, <laughs> but, but it never fails to pop up during the set of Rebel TV. I'm glad you're here. How about you, Kore? You want to tell us a little about yourself? Um, hi, my name is Kore Quinn, and I am in a little town in North Carolina. It's called Bay Boro. I live with my husband and my 18 years, 18 years old son, three cats, do two dogs, in a beautiful view. Sometimes I don't get anything done just to look in at the beautiful view. Um, and I am very, very proud to say that I am part of this amazing group it's called the Rebels. We are a bunch of rebels who blog away. So thank you for being here and thank you, Jackie. Oh, well, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Jackie Lee, and I'm your host today. I live in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, with my daughter and my husband, and we have two dogs and three cats, one of which is an outside cat, but who would like to be an inside cat. I've been a full-time blogger for almost eight years now, and I, too, am a very proud member of the Rebel Marketers. So let's dig into the topic. Oh, okay, I think you're going to find that all three of us have very differing ideas about this subject, so I'm really excited to, to jump in and see where it goes. Um, I was thinking about this topic because um, originally the topic was um, when your dreams happen expectedly or unexpectedly. And what I was thinking, when that's happened in my life, it's really come from, in, in my world, in my view, it's come from the law of attraction. And I said to them earlier before we started, like, let's talk about that. So let's just start with the law of attraction and where you guys stand on that. Uh, Kelly, what about you? You a believer, non-believer? What do you think? And you're on mute. If you had asked me a year ago about the law of attraction, I thought it was a bunch of hippie, new age, crazy talk. But um, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> but but over time. I, I've, I've just seen it happen more and more, and I'm, I'm really a believer. Um, but, you know, I think there are, different, there are different camps with the law of attraction. There are people who believe that it's all just a matter of letting the universe know what you want, and the universe sends it to you. And I'm not really into that. I don't think that anything comes to you without you doing something to get it. And um, as a matter of fact, I just posted on my blog a couple days ago a video and I can't even remember the guy's name, but he was talking about the law of attraction. And I, there's 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 a story that a lot of law of attraction law of attraction people use. It's like if you're if you're wanting to have a red sports car, you can't sit in your house telling the universe I want a red sports car and expect one to roll into your driveway unless you live at the bottom of a hill and there's a red sports car dealer at the top of the hill. Um, you know, maybe then one will just happen to roll in. But. Uh, I believe that that you know what he said in the video was that the the second part of attraction is action, and that's what I'm all about. Is the take action wom is is what I call myself online. It's what my blog is about. It's you know it's taking action is what makes things happen for you. Even when you don't know what you're doing, you need to start taking action, and that's how the law of attraction has worked for me. Um, last year when we were moving into this apartment. We were short. I'd, I'd just taken a trip to the United States and spent a lot more money than I expected to. Um, my husband had gotten injured playing soccer, and we just spent a bunch of money at the doctor's office, and our savings was way low. And we needed a thousand more dollars than what we had to move into this apartment. And this was on a Saturday when we first talked to the landlord and told him, we'll have the money on Monday. So we needed $1,000 between Saturday and Monday. It's two days to get $1,000. I had no idea how I was going to do it, but I came home and I set this intention that I was going to have $1,000 on Monday. And once I set that intention and threw it out there and, and said it will not 
it's not like I'm going to do it or I'm going to try. It's It'll be done. We will have that $1,000 on Monday. All these ideas for ways to get the money just started coming to us and things started happening. I got a phone call from somebody that wanted to buy some of our furniture, um, a charity organization that wanted to buy some of our furniture and, and appliances so that they could use them for to, to give to um, underprivileged people. And uh, she bought just so much stuff from us it ended up because we needed to sell it anyways for the move that it was over half of the money we needed right there and it's just you know things just kept happening like that out of the blue because I was putting that energy out there and making it known you know and we were finding ideas different ways to make the money and when Monday morning came we had that thousand dollars and we were able to move into the apartment and it was a you know, that was the first time that, that Law of Attraction really, really worked for me. But I don't think it would have worked if I just sat in my house saying, please, 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 give me $1,000, $1,000. I'm going to have $1,000 Monday. That wasn't going to do it. We needed to get out and take action. I needed to let people know, hey, I've got stuff for sale. Hey, we're looking to do that. You know, that's when the thing started coming back to me. And you can say, yeah, well, that would have happened without the Law of Attraction. And, yeah, maybe it would have. But if I hadn't made that intention and set that out there, ready to go, I don't know that all these different ideas would have come to me. I for how to make it happen, you know it. Because what is what is that what is that thing, Jackie? What is it when you start seeing everything that um, the reticulating activating system? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> or, or they call it what do they call it? Red car syndrome. When you buy a red car, you start seeing red cars everywhere. It's like because I put that intention out there that I will have a thousand dollars, I started seeing ways to make money everywhere over that course of that weekend. It just ideas started coming. I kept seeing things. Somebody would say I see something somebody said on Facebook that they're looking for a crock pot. Oh my gosh, I got a crock pot, I can sell it. You know, and all these things just started coming to me because I made that intention. And I really believe that. That if I had not set that attention, those ideas wouldn't have been coming to me. I totally agree with you, and I remember that, and it was really remarkable to watch you go through that weekend. Um, and that's kind of how I see the law of attraction, too, is that it's not about wishing, and it's kind of the difference between saying if and how. Like, when you set the intention, you all of a sudden change the vibration into a how is it going to get done. It's like it's already done. It's just a matter of how it's going to get done now. And then you're kind of magnetic almost to ideas and inspiration that's going to help you make that happen. And then it's just a matter of taking action, just like you said. And I think you're right. I think that if you hadn't been, if you hadn't set the intention and moved into the how mode of thinking, that none of those things probably would have showed up for you because you wouldn't have been looking for them. It is just like the red car thing. Um, and I think that once you decide that you're going to do it, it's going to be done, and how is just the question that the universe will like just right. bring things, ideas. They're not going to throw it in your lap, but they're going to throw ways for you to make it happen in your lap. And then you have the responsibility to, to take those ideas and put them into the world. At least that's the way I see it. It's like what Will Smith it. said. Oh. Sorry, Kelly. It's like what Will Smith said. You know, it's like once he makes up his mind to do something, it's already done. He just has to wait until the rest of the world can see it. Mm, that's a good point. I like that one. All right, Kare, what about you? What do you? What's your take on law of attraction? Oh wow, the law of attraction and I, we have a beautiful attraction. <laughs> I learned about the law of attraction um, the first time that I got this metaphysics book, and I learned that in the universe are rule. The universe is ruled by seven laws, and one of them is the law of attraction. And then I did what a lot of people uh, does, you know, make the list, ask this, and take action. Well, however, on the back of my mind, I always had thought, well, if the law of attraction works for good things, and it's not you who run in the show, but it's your subconscious mind, so maybe that's why things that I don't want happen in my life happen, because I'm attracting them with my subconscious mind. Uh, then I learned about this technique, and I have been studying with this. Uh, he's my mentor, uh, not physically, but uh, through his videos. And 
the law of attraction exists absolutely yes because it's one of the laws of the universe however I don't think we can manipulate it because if we do then when we manipulate the good we bring the bad as well I believe as now so firmly that my job is to clean my energy because everything that it comes to me is a memory and my job is to clean and let God to guide the rest is like saying okay I try it my way I try to manipulate the law of attraction I try to get up in the morning and make a list and I will get one or two things and I would be like okay what happened to the rest why it didn't work for this but it worked for that for instance when I was living in Japan um, the jacket the coats over there are very small and I have uh, you know I'm a kind of front big lady so I didn't fit in a lot of other coats uh, so when I was in Japan and I was coming to United States for vacations I I thought I need and it was like this it just came to my mind I need a red coat 100% wool red buttons has to be a straight line uh, I just saw it on my mind okay this red coat red buttons uh, straight line I'm a what they call petite woman because I'm very short on the waist and I don't want to pay more than a hundred bucks and I remember telling to my ex-husband hey I want this and he said when are you going to buy that with a hundred bucks and I said I don't know but it just come to my mind well I came to United States Kansas City back then I is something I dislike in life is to go shopping I just don't like shopping I run out of clothes before I go shopping but that day uh, my mother-in-law said that the uh, if I can go with her to do a shopping and I felt bad to say no so I went with her and at the end of the shopping which for me was like oh my gosh she's, she's shopping more than an hour that's too long uh, so I told her if, if we were done, a very polite way to say, you know what, this is more than to torture to me. So she said, oh yeah, yeah, on the way out, it was this beautiful coat on a mannequin. And I just speak and I said, oh my God, that is my coat. I got inside and I say, do you have that in medium petite? And she said, whatever it is, it is the one in the mannequin, we don't have another one. Well, what did you know? It was my size. And he, guess how much I pay for it? $99 because it was 50% off. It was the last coat, quote, coat, and it was 200 and some. After the discount and with the taxes, I paid $99. And I thought, well, the law of attraction works. But then I got scared because I thought, well, that means when I think about something bad, it comes as well. And that's when I got like, okay, so we might not perhaps live our life manipulating the law of attraction and then you know somehow I got introduced to this technique and my mentor said you don't manipulate anything because it doesn't work because we are every second we get 11 billions of information and we are only conscious of about 50 so when we think that we are manipulating 50, the other rest are playing on the back of our subconscious mind. And the way that he's playing is like when you go in your house, right, and you are in the kitchen and you have a little CD playing on your bedroom and your son is in the other bedroom and your husband is in the in the garage all those things are happening but because you are in the kitchen paying attention only whatever you are doing doesn't mean the rest of the house is not going on and that's how he explained the subconscious mind works he said you are uh, aware of only 50 but the other that's why the law of attraction doesn't work most of the time and that's why bad things happen to us as well and I thought, okay, so what is the solution? And he said, just clean the memories, just love your memories. And it's very easy, just 24 7 repeating your mind, thank you, I love you. And God will give to you what is right for you. And for that moment on, I'm like, okay, 
was nice to get my red coat, but I do not want all the rest things that it came with because at the same time, I got a lot of bad things came to me. And I'm like, okay, that was the subconscious mind. It was not my fault. <laughs> but it definitely exists because it's one of the, the laws of the universe. However, 10 years ago, I lived by it. I would get up and make a list and repeat in the morning and the afternoon and all this. And some of the things were very rewarding. Some of them, they were not. But I was always thinking about the other law. Then you say every action has a reaction. Um, so what I mean is if you want to manipulate the law of attraction, it's going to change in another way. So it's going to be a reaction. Why not just to clean and let God to give or the universe or whatever. I choose to call it God. Not nobody knows better than God what is best for me. So that's that's what I live by now. So that's wow. my take on the law of attraction. That's really interesting. I, I like that perspective. Um, so when it comes to uh, your dreams coming true, do you have um, a story that you'd like to share about a time in your life when a dream has come true? And whether it's been from law of attraction or however you see it coming to fruition, like just tell us that story, Kelly. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, the first thing that comes to my mind, and I know this sounds really corny when I talk about a dream coming true, is meeting my husband. But, um, mm -hmm. and I don't know, that was, that was one of those things where, you know, when they say when you, when you quit looking, it comes to you. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of exactly what happened. I had been, um, I just had, I decided that I was going to stay single the rest of my life, that I, you know, I, I was already getting close to 40 and I just decided not to. And then it's like the universe aligned and put us together. I mean, he's Peruvian, he's from Peru. I live in the United States and yet we meet at a bar in the Bahamas. I you know, neither of us drink, not, not really. Um, Neither of us are the kind of person that goes out to bars, and yet we both got talked into it that night. My sister talked me into it. His cousin talked him into it. Neither one of us wanted to go. I really just wanted to stay back at the hotel. And I mean, we were at the Atlantis Hotel in the Bahamas, and I really just wanted to stay there by the pool and relax. And my sister was like, no, we need to go out. We need to go out. So I'm, finally, I let them talk me into it. He was the same way. His cousin's like, you need to get out. You can't just sit around the house. You're in the Bahamas. You need to get out and have some fun see a new part of the world. So he gave in, and he walked in, and when he walked in the door, I looked at our friend that was with us, not my sister, but our friend that was with us, and I said, I could marry that guy. I just, his face, I saw it, and I was like, that's it. And ten minutes later, we were talking, and we pretty much have not been apart since then. I'm, I mean, we, you know, I had to travel. It was a long-distance thing for a while, but because I was living in the U.S. and he was living there in the Bahamas, but but that was it. I mean, as I, we knew that night, we just both of us knew, and and it, it happened. And he really is. He really is for me. He's a dream <laughs> come true. He was everything that I ever thought being married, being in a lifetime relationship, would be. So that was it for me. Love it. Love it. Oh wow, that is so beautiful. I know. Kelly, that is so beautiful. You should blog about it. You made the world believe in love again, honey. I, I blogged again. I have blogged that. I've blogged that a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel wow. so lucky. You know, it's, um, I, you know, I was in, I was in some, we lost you, Kelly. Oh, hi. Are you still there? I think you lost Kelly. Do you have a story, Kare, that you'd like to share? Yes. Um, when come back. <laughs> when, yeah. When um, I had this fascination for the painter Vincent Benko, uh, I just love his story. There is a song 
written by uh, this American writer, the one that he write that he wrote American Pie. Mm -hmm. um, the every time that I hear that song, it, I just cry. It, it's called Vincent. Anyway, while back when I was in Mexico, I said to my cousin one day, I said one day, somehow I'm going to go and been to Amsterdam and spend a whole day in Vincent van Gogh Museum. And at night, I'm going to go and treat myself to watching a nice performance of ballet. And she said, why would you do that? And I said, because I just saw it on my head. I just saw myself looking at his work, and I just saw myself sitting in front and listening to the to the orchestra perform and the and the dancers I said it just I said if I die the next day I would say done and I'll be happy so anyway but I just say it right so one day um, I for 2000 we I decided I was going to spend New Year's uh, come the come of the millennium in Amsterdam right so we went, uh, we went to Amsterdam, and I thought, okay, cool, but I couldn't personally get the tickets to see the Kirov, the Russian uh, ballet. And I thought, oh, shoot. And I thought, that would be so perfect. And I said, okay, let it go, let it go. If you mean, it will be. So anyway, so I went, and I got uh, to Amsterdam, and this is 15 years after I told my cousin and I want to do that. I got to Amsterdam one day in late evening. By 7 o'clock in the morning, which is not me, I was ready to get a taxi to wait outside of the Van Gogh Museum. And I did, and I went and spent the whole day and just stare at his work and I just imagine him with his pain and his sorrow and his devastation because his mental illness and and it was just this connection with him. Then I was just like, how can so much pain create so much beauty? Or perhaps he was not in pain. It was we, the thing that he was in pain. He was just living his life and his world. Anyway, my conversation with him came. And at the end of the day, my ex-husband said, I hope you brought a nice dress because I have a present for you. For uh, for Christmas, and I said, uh, "What is it?" He said, "Well, get dressed. It's a very elegant place." So I said, "Yeah, but I bought a dress for a nice dinner." He said, "Okay, good." So we go. We get out of the museum because they kicked me out. I was the first to get in and the last to get kicked out. They closed the museum. I'm like, and just let me one more one more time to his painting, and. We go to our dinner and then we go to a taxi and we drive in and we went to see the ballet at the Kirov dance in the Lake of the Swan. I saw the how to say the sign and I start bullying. <laughs> like, oh my god, I'm sorry, God, then I then I doubt at you. I'm so so sorry. And I get in there, and the tickets were right next to the orchestra. And to hear the music of Tchaikovsky playing, and the last, the last part of the ballet, and, and when, when she goes and supposedly die and all that, and my, my ex-husband said, okay, let's go. I said, no, no, no. I said, she's going to come out alive. And she said, how did you know? I said, hello, I've been waiting for this moment of my life. I read the play, honey. I read the ballet, everything. And you're like, oh, I, I, I knew you like it, but not that much. I didn't want to get out of the, the theater. And I remember getting out of there and I wear still very high, high heels, skipping like a little girl, jumping up and down. Yes, I did it. I did it. And dancing and running. And my ex husband like, did you mind? And I said, no, I'm happy. And the world can know it. I, was, I said, I saw Van Gogh. And tonight I saw Tchaikovsky. And I said, two of the most men in the world suffering connect with me. Why? I don't know. But I just... It was, even now, I'm still so happy just to remember that 
why did I have that dream in my in my head? I don't know. I don't know, but I had nothing. I had never had such a vivid dream that I want to accomplish so much, like those two things. And why it was that I had to have it in the same day, and why it had to be in, in Amsterdam, I had no clue. But it was like that. It, it had to be Amsterdam, and it has to be in the same day, accomplish that. So to me, that is, I have a lot of dreams come true, but one then it came from nowhere and I spell it like that and then when I accomplish feel the sense of joy that made me skipping like a little girl yes yes I did outside of the, of the theater and you know dancing around and <laughs> to the point that my ex-husband like you are bananas and I said yes and I'm so happy <laughs> Wow, that is an amazing story. Gosh, you guys, we are totally out of time again. Gosh, it just goes so fast. Thank you two for joining me to talk about this. I really, really appreciate having you. And if someone invited you here to watch Rebel TV, make sure you take a minute and look around the site, click the links, and get to know your Rebel a little bit better. They cared enough to send you our way. Uh, we'll be back here tomorrow again, same time, same place. Have an amazing day, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.